What's your thoughts on government cover-ups or covert societies attempting to control humanity? Do you believe in ancient astronauts, intergalactic communication, or extraterrestrial visitations? Ever had an experience with disembodied spirits or the paranormal universe? Are these subjects fact or fiction? Each week, Tony and Eddie explore these unbelievable realities and beyond. Exclusively on Truth Be Told. Welcome to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie, where we believe an experience becomes truth. I'm your host, Tony Sweet, and joining me now in studio is your world-renowned psychic and the other host, Eddie Connor. Thanks, Tony, and welcome to the show, everybody. Today, we're starting off with a new segment titled, Did You Know? Did you know that no amount of positive energy will overcome or undo the magnetic energy of your negative thoughts? Did you know that your negative thoughts have been accumulated over lifetimes and are carried forward into this current life experience. And did you know <laughs> that to create a foundational change in this life, this energetic baggage must be first neutralized? Now, I think we have everybody's attention, don't you? I think so, too. And here to walk us through these observations is a beautiful author and an energy healer, Janet Richman. Janet's the author of The Higher Self Voice on Choices, which is all about neutralizing your negative thoughts and emotional blueprints. And she's also going to share her new book, Soul Psychology, which is a journey through the human kingdom universe. All right, Eddie, I can't wait any longer because Janet's going to do a soul scan on me exclusively for our audience. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so please put your hands together and welcome our brand new friend to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie, the beautiful, famous energy healer, author, and artist, Janet Richman. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to Truth Be Told. Payback is wonderful. <laughs> welcome to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie. I'm Eddie Connor. And I'm Tony Sweet. And we have with us today Janet Richmond. And it's been a minute to get Janet here. I was trying to make a rhyme, but it didn't work. So <laughs> it's taken a minute to get her here. And I first heard about you through my friends Millie and Roe who go to Janet's uh, meetup workshops and healing groups, and they talked and talk and talk and talk and talk about this extraordinary healer named Janet. And they'll be like, you got to meet Janet, child, let me tell you. And I was like, Janet Jackson? <laughs> they said, no, Janet Richmond. And then I go, boom, 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 because it was Janet Richmond. So we kept kind of slightly missing each other. Fast forward to I'm in Peru with 22 people, a brand new person I've never met in my entire life, while we're walking through the streets of Cusco, Peru, she just sort of looks at me and she says, you know something, I have a great guest for you and Tony. I said, you do? Who is it? She's like, it's this author. I'm reading Soul Psychology, and her name is Janet Richman. <laughs> it was meant to be. Thousands and thousands of miles on the other side of North America, I'm hearing about you again. So it's this wonderful soul chronicity. And one thing led to the next, and I got back to the States, and we finally got to connect, and here you are. Yes, Yay. and thank you so much. And that's <laughs> such a great story. And it's one of those stories that just, it just kept unfolding and unfolding. So if I didn't hear it first from Ro, and if I didn't hear it second from Millie, then if I didn't hear it third from Rachel, then I deserve to get hit upside the head. I always say when it's three <laughs> times, it, 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 it's a must. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they go it's knock, knock, knock it. Oh. On heaven's door. I did not know that. Yeah, that, yeah that's what. Uh, child, please. Who would have thunked? <laughs> so your title is Energy Healing Expert, and we'd love to know how you got started in it a little bit because we know you're going to do a soul scan. Did you take your vitamins? Did you eat your Wheaties? <laughs> Uh, yes, I did. Okay, thank you so much because you're going to be I, doing I it on people. Tony. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so let us know how you got started as an energy healer. Well, I started in the 80s wow. and I met someone who. When you're like two? What? N yeah. <laughs> Two or three. <laughs> <laughs> right out of the womb. Um, and I just met someone who taught amazing information, higher self information. That's I call myself the higher self voice mm. based on mm. that. And she changed my life. 
I took all of her classes and all of her workshops, and after about four years, she moved out of state, but I just kept working with, mm. the, with it. And just slowly but surely, my life just kept changing. All the techniques that I have in my books, choices, and then also in soul psychology. So I've been practicing a long time and decided to go into this work um, in 2009. Wow. Well, in 2006, but... Um, so it took you that long to make that decision this is what yes wow well what happened was this woman died in 2006 and her daughter gave me the rights to her material oh so that's talk about somebody kind of giving you your destiny well i was always interested i was trying to work with her and she wanted to write books and i was going to be at that time like a secretary or you know right yeah and then she unexpectedly died and her daughter said absolutely you good for you <coughs> You can do it, and it's really a passion of mine. It changed me and my friends and so many people over the years. So, I would love to know. I would have loved to have seen you X number of years ago before you started this path and then see you standing beside of yourself today. And the reason for that is what little bit I've read in the first book, Choices, and you talk about your before life and your current life. And the other reason is I have never met anyone who moved into the healing arts or spirituality whose life was perfect and wonderful. It's always when we're feeling like death gnawing on a cracker and we got one foot on a banana peel and it's an organic banana peel because <laughs> we're in L.A. And then the other one over the grape where we just feel like, you know, we're, we're done. But then something shifts and then we find this information and then we either transform or we stay stuck. So I would love to see the before and after well, very simply, both my parents were killed when I was 18 months old, and mm. I was adopted by my aunt and uncle. It was a wonderful family, but I literally never recovered, I and I not. grew up absolutely deathly shy, emotionally crippled. <laughs> Me too. <I> know. <laughs> so many, have, yeah. you know, whatever reason, so many people have had hard childhood, and I just kept wanting to fix myself. I didn't want, I was constantly anxious, just constantly, chronically anxious for no good reason. Hmm. And I couldn't get rid of it. And so I just kept trying to fix myself. And I was in therapy, in and out of therapy for a while, and became really aware of my patterns, but I wasn't able to get rid of the anxiety. I wasn't really able to change. I understood, oh, well, there's that mother pattern again. You know? yeah, <laughs> right. But I, I wasn't able to change those patterns. And then I discovered this material from Joan Culpepper. And the very first time I went to her, the higher selves gave me an exercise to, for the anxiety. And within five days, it was gone. And that, that was so huge. Miraculous. That, five days. It was in five days, it was gone. And so now... I mean, you know, of course, I jumped into everything she had to teach. I, again, I'm, I've only read a little bit of Janet's books. M my question that comes to mind when you're explaining that is, was some of the anxiety possibly what you may have been picking up from the environment around you and not being able to separate from other people's energy, or was it yours? It was mine. Wow. This it was totally mine. Just constantly all the time and I I had so many workarounds you know how we all <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you know, we all have those workarounds and it just was it was just really hard so one of the things Tony and I talked about in the introduction uh, for you is like did you know that your negative thoughts emotions and beliefs have been accumulated over eons of lifetimes and they're also carried forward into this current life experience was that the deal with the chronic anxiety with you well, what happens, and it was exactly what you said, usually people who have gone into this work have something that's, something that's happened to them yeah. that's upsetting. And really what happens is when we want to heal, and this gets to my second book actually, but it's relevant to this question, we, when we come into this life, we have a decision at the soul level that we want to heal something or bring something into balance or mm -hmm. to learn or whatever we're doing. And we set up not... That, that we set up the situations and conditions before we're born yep. to activate the pattern you want to heal. Mm -hmm. Because if you come in, you have a wonderful childhood. What motivation do you have to seek and search and heal? You have no clue. And, and to, to be a, a, an intricate part to build a healing community on yes. this planet, you're just sort of complacent with the silver spoon. Yeah. So, so in fact, I brought in a lot of problems and a lot of issues, some of which um, I deal with in the uh, in my book. Uh, wonderful story. 
problem with my aunt that was part of my hurt and part of my anxiety. Right. But by the end of her life, everything was resolved. So it's a pretty interesting story. And so what happens is, though, to get back to the original question about my statement there, with every life that we have, we think, we feel, we emote, we experience. And all of those things that we go through create energies. And we carry those energies in our etheric bodies. You probably have heard of etheric right. bodies, you know. And Which is a non-physical aspect of our human apparatus, lifetime to lifetime. Thank you for clarifying. You're that. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to just saying that, but that's exactly it. Okay. When we lay aside the body, though, we don't lay aside the, that, those energies. We take them with us, and they join. This We call it the mind of this life is the current life we're in. And when we lay aside the body, the all those energies get become part of the soul, which you could think of as the minds of the past and this is how the soul accumulates knowledge understanding uh develop learns learns many things brings things into state of balance it also holds on to a lot of hurts a lot of wounds a lot of misunderstandings mm. a lot of misconceptions misinterpretations pains self-identities false beliefs i mean you name it we have it because we've been around for thousands and tens of thousands and actually hundreds of thousands of lifetimes the evolutionary process is huge. It doesn't. It takes a long time to evolve from the animal nature to taking on and fully understanding the totality of human nature. Which would be a very clear, it's the best way I've ever heard it articulated, why a soul would then choose what they choose when they come to Earth to move through that and have as less of the gunky stuff as possible by the time they get to where they're destined yes. to go. And unfortunately, it doesn't always happen. You make a plan at the soul level, but you can come in and you just go on automatic pilot mm -hmm. with the energies that you're carrying. And so a lot of times you can come in for tens or hundreds of lifetimes and not really progress. That's what I love about this work. So I work my to cook us off. I, and I do. I'm, I'm pretty conscious and cognizant almost the whole time I'm awake. <clears throat> excuse me, about what my default pattern is. So if I'm, the minute I get worked up or stressed or some asshole pulls out in front of me on the 405, I will default to an existing pattern that I've worked my whole life to get out of. It just pops in. And then I have to then be cognizant and conscious all over again to stay up here. And so what you're talking about is you can't just positive think this stuff away. It's you have to break the patterns and you've got to go in. Mm -hmm. You go in and you though that that automatic got stuff that comes up, you can neutralize that or dissolve it. And whatever term it's not about the term, I use neutralize, and then that won't pop up anymore. Yeah. That's the point. Oh, yeah. That's what I did with the the hooks that were causing all that anxiety. anxiety. And some things take <laughs> longer than others. I don't want people to think, oh, I just need five days and that's it. Because the the deeper the pattern, the more complex it is, the mm -hmm. more elements and layers there are. I mean, when we've been around so many lives, it's it, you know, it takes time sometimes. But you don't have to get all the way to the end to fix it totally to notice right. that it's less intense, less often less it doesn't derail you you know those kind of patterns it's it's really powerful work this stuff. so when people say i just i'm done with this life i'm ready to leave it's not working out the way i want to i have always said and their guides have always said whenever i'm doing a reading you can do that if you want to but guess what's going to meet you when you get back that's exactly right you have to go through it you can't go over it or under it or around it you have to go through it that's absolutely correct, and we come well equipped. And you're going to learn about it when the when I do the Ooh. mini healing on you, which is a great. Well, go ahead. I well, know I you have gonna, a question. No, I was going to ask you. Uh, I was curious when you said you were going through the anxiety. How was your health at that time? Was it fairly healthy, or did were you a, I had a lot of illnesses? A lo you know, I had a lot of physical problems. I was born with some congenital deformity, and I yeah. had two major surgeries. And you know, my intestines are kind of like a scramble. <laughs> Egg beater went in there mm -hmm. and scrambled them around, and I, I've had, you know, a lot of, a lot of health problems, none of which I have anymore. <laughs> That's going to say yeah, once you. This, this work f wow. is good for emotional issues, mental, psychological, right. physical. 
uh, if you apply yourself, you c everybody comes well equipped. You can you can really create the life you want. So before we do the soul scan, I want to ask this. I, in doing readings for 25 years, one of the patterns or things that has started to come through maybe 12 years ago is, and I could be full of baloney, but this is what came through, that the first year of life on this planet, you live, you have all, all of your chakras, that's obvious, but from birth to one year old, you live predominantly in the root chakra. You're in all of them, but predominantly you're really anchoring in whatever your beliefs and stuff is going to be in the root chakra. From one-year-old to two-year-old, you're living in the sacral center predominantly, and you're anchoring in all the way up to the seventh chakra. Um, what your patterning will be as an adult and what you want to be cognizant of. So is the digestive system part of the second chakra or the third the higher self information doesn't really talk about it like that. Yeah. So I'm taking your word for it that that's what happens. Um, <laughs> I think that the digestive system would have to be this. Yeah. Okay. Chakra. The solar plexus. Yeah, the solar plexus. But I, you know, I work on the patterns and what causes the patterns. And sometimes chakra information comes up. Sometimes it doesn't. Hmm. But I'm not that as versed as you are on that. And I'm not that versed in it, too. When you said that, I'm taking your word for it. I'm not joking. Like a, a being, very feminine being, came off to this, your right side, my left side, looking at you and said, she's sweet that way, isn't she? <laughs> and, and then your heart just went, oh. <laughs> and I thought, that is sweet. <laughs> now, speaking of sweet, oh. so you're going to be doing. Be <laughs> <laughs> He's so surprised. So this is getting is going to get real now, everybody. Because Don't make me cry or this anything, is okay. make him cry. <laughs> I mean, it, it's good to cry. No, it is. It We're is talking great. about that. Yeah. Um, so it's going to get real in that. Obviously, none of this is scripted, and Tony has agreed to experience uh, a thumbnail sketch of what Janet does as a soul scan, as a healer who is doing a soul scan on Tony. So what Tony, the only thing Tony has prepared is what you've asked him to do. And that is, he is wanting to address his fear of success. And he started noticing this pattern consciously in his mid to late thirties. And it's a pattern his entire family has. So he's born into this pattern and it's always followed him. But when he has moments, and then you jump in anytime you want to, but when he <laughs> has moments where he could change the pattern, he will intentionally avoid it because of the fear of change and or fear of success. And he knows it. He feels he should go through it, but he just does something instead and then starts working on the exterior, the exterior of this building, the exterior of his body, the exterior mm -hmm. of his refrigerator, whatever it is. And that's what he wants you to address as a healer today. Okay. Now that's real. I mean, this... That is real. And it's a pretty common, common pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a pretty common pattern. I just worked on someone recently and I won't tell you because... I'm not going to say, but I could tell you what his was. Yeah. He had a long term history with his dad and his father in this life in past lives. And he, um, I, I don't remember all the details, but for some reason he didn't want to do better than his father in this life. And so his father hadn't been, hasn't done very well. And so he just kept sabotaging himself so that he wouldn't get any more successful than his dad. Hmm. Yeah, but I didn't. Ding. No, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, you know, it, it's different for everyone, but right. that was just what it was for him. And I wish I could remember the details, but when I go into frequency, it's clear as a bell when I'm done and I can talk really knowledgeably. And then it's kind of like a dream. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Then Next day, you're like, what blurs. was that exactly? <laughs> right. <laughs> because you're literally between worlds, as it were. It's just um, moving the consciousness into like a higher frequency of some sort. So how are you going to work through this dense blob of bone, <laughs> blood and flesh? Just curious. Okay. Well, I'm going to do. <laughs> now, what, now, what we're going to do in the room is I'm going to be quiet from here forward for about 10 or 15 minutes. We're going to turn the floor over to Janet Richmond, JanetRichmond.com. And then she's going to do her magic here on Tony's Sweet. So let's watch. All right. Take it away. Okay. So. Tony, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a short amalgamation, I call it, which is just basically bringing us into 
and utilizing the divine energies. And they're the ones that really do the work. And in fact, it's your divine energies that will be doing the healing. I'm just going to kind of guide it along. <laughs> okay. Hello. <laughs> um, and you don't need to say anything. I'm going to shut my eyes because I need to do that in order to focus. And the focus of attention is really important. It's it's the turn on switch, so, so to speak, gives, gives the divine energies that we use permission to um, be active. Uh, I recommend that you do too so you can process and feel or sense or imagine because I try to when I when I do it I'm going to explain it in such a way that you're going to become an active participant in your own healing it isn't a matter of just waiting for me to do it I'm happy to guide it guide you and but you actually can if you're the active participant it empowers the healing and oh, I think you okay. understand yeah of course what yes. I mean yeah okay. <laughs> talking to the choir I think <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to just shut my eyes and just ask that you take a few, a couple deep breaths, myself too. Uh, it's the first time I've done a healing live on a show like this, but I do it every week on my own radio show, but there's no video. In any case, I want you to bring your mind's eye in right to this now moment. And the first thing we're going to do is understand that the now moment, in fact, is an energy field. And by focusing on it, the moment is being set up. It's an energy field that's surrounding the two of us. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually use that focus of attention, which is our turn-on switch, to expand the now moment to encompass the totality of the forever now moment. What this means is that you are going to be encased in an energy field for the with the totality of your soul process from the time you began as a mineral and moved through the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, the human kingdom, and beyond, for you are one that has processed way beyond the human kingdom and have returned. This information is not going to be forthcoming today, but it, for some reason, your higher selves wished me to mention it to you. In any case, the totality of you at the soul process level is within this forever now moment, and as is mine. And the reason we activate this forever now moment is simply so that we can access the totality of your journey in this healing. It's The healing is more than just one event, one life, 10 lives, it's the totality of your journey that is going to be coming into play and allows us to move the healing into the deepest level that we can. We are also going to now focus the attention on the light that we have within. I'm not, I don't want you to worry about the name of the light. I call it the pure soul essence. People call it divine light or the God within or the great spirit within or whatever anybody wants to say about it or, or how they categorize it. It's okay. It's not about the, ver the, the term. But the understanding that this light is actually part of the originating source of all there is. And every soul from the lowliest grain of sand to the highest, most evolved being carries this light. It is at this level, the human level, where we become aware that we carry it. And at some point in the human journey, we become aware of what it is and how it's, why it's there and how it can help us. So I want you to focus on that light. And I often suggest the symbol of a sun, an internal sun, because the sun is so powerful in its own right, it immediately connects us to that very, very infinite resource, this light, this divine light. By focusing on it, you can visualize or imagine, think or just know that that light is expanding and it's moving in through and around the totality of your body physical body, in through and around the totality of your etheric bodies, and it's continuing to move and in through and around the totality of your soul process. And I'm doing the same thing, and in this way, you and I are being joined in one accord, and this healing is going to be in your highest ideal and in accord with your divine plan. Um, the next and last part of the amalgamation is simply to walk into or become one with the originating source itself. The symbol that I use is the diamond to pyramids, four-sided pyramids base to base. And it's an energetic field, not solid like an actual diamond. And so it can 
grow to encompass the totality of who we are. And in fact, it is so huge. This diamond is moved, it's big and bigger than the planet, and I see it moving through the universe. So it is encompassing the totality of your journey as a soul and mine as well. Now, the, the, the last step, I already said that was the last step, but I want to call in some energy called the Rainbow Bridge energy. It does connect us uh, at the chakra level to the chakras of originating source, and in this way, it brings the chakras into the highest level of efficiency that we can reach at this moment in time. And the reason we do that is that chakras are energy exchange points. We are going to, you're going to be releasing a lot of the negative energies that come up for the healing and you're uh, into your light through the chakras. You're also going to be bringing in this amazing resource that we have of the originating source and our pure soul essence, which is everything the originating source was, is, and is becoming. It is our purest and most potent uh, and most perfect point of power. So we... we are going to be accessing the totality of that for this healing, and the Rainbow Bridge facilitates that by bringing the, the chakras into the highest state of efficiency. It also is go- creating right between us a platform of Rainbow Bridge energy. I won't explain everything because we have limited time, but on this platform is going to be the symbol that I'm going to see. Uh, <laughs> it's already arriving. I keep hitting this. Um, the mic, I'm sorry, uh, the the symbol of the healing. And I see you, you've arrived in, sim- in symbolic form. And this, again, is a presentation by you at the soul level. It's, it's showing me the you that is very, um, uh, there's fear here, there's insecurity, there's confusion, and all of that, which you, you would expect given your pattern. And the, uh, I just want you to understand that there are going to be things that I might say about this symbol that you can't relate to at the mind level. A lot of things you'll be able to relate to, but the important thing is to understand that if you're carrying at the soul level, uh, even if you can't relate to it, I want you to go ahead and utilize the process that I'm going to run you through. Generally, I'm going to explain the symbol, what's behind the symbol, because the symbol is just a symbol. It's what's behind it that you want to heal. What's, what are the causes, direct and indirect, of this pattern of fear of change or fear of success or uh, that, that issue that you brought to the table today? And so we want to see what's going on. And every time I find something, for example, let's say I see shame behind here, I want you to consciously release shame into your light the light will automatically neutralize it and absorb it. So as I, whatever I'm saying, whatever visuals I see, like I've already said, it's, it, there's insecurity here and there's fear, you go ahead and just release those. And if something else that I don't say comes to your mind, release that too. Don't wait for me to say it. This is a thumbnail. I'm not going to get to everything. I'm going to get to one small piece in the time we have. So it I want you to be the active participant, as I explained, and just do as much of the work as you can. A lot can be done in this 5 or 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so right now, I see you kind of as a a boy, because you're small, but the interesting thing is I'm actually seeing you as a man looking like a boy. It's it's sort of an interesting symbol. Every symbol I see is different, because every individual is different, and um, there's something about you that's stunted. And again, there's never any judgment here, so don't feel like you're stunted and I'm judging you, because it's not about that. I'm just explaining what I see so that we can work on changing how the symbol looks, which is the indicator that you're healing the whatever it is that you, um, you know, that you're working on. So, okay, so I want you to to start to let go this whole idea of being stunted in your growth. It's only a perception. It is not who you are, and it's not what, how you really are. This is this is tapping into a belief system that somehow you're not good enough, you're not capable enough, you're not big enough, you're not, um, by big I don't mean tall necessarily, but I mean more like 
competent enough or certified enough or, you know, there's all these not enoughs in your, in this pattern. And I want you to begin to let go of all of these ideas of not being enough. And uh, along with it, and part of it is this feeling of being powerless and, um, just one sec. I know you don't want to leave too much time here. <laughs> the, the idea... The idea of being powerless, the idea of being uh, not knowing where to go, because if you go down a certain pathway, you don't. We don't see often what's around the corner, and because you don't feel like you're enough, it's scary as heck to go around a corner because you might meet something you can't handle. I really want to emphasize that you have tremendous ability. I see this tremendous. Um, um, unlimited nature that you have. It's just absolutely brilliant, Eddie. I mean, Tony, it's brilliant. You have this unlimited nature. It's only the idea and the belief system, the self-identities that you carry at the soul level. Now, you've worked through, I see you've done a lot of work in this life because you have succeeded quite a bit in this life. So I feel uh, that you have done work. This isn't the first time in this life or even the first life that you have worked on this, but there's still that almost like a, a root, oh gosh, almost like a root system. And I want you to actually visualize this beautiful light you have moving in through your chakras and finding that root system and moving down and doing the neutralizing from within. Uh, you can do it either way. You can release it out or you can bring the light in. We're, we're not limited in that way. And I want you to just simply start to find all those roots, those tenders. I see like a taproot. I see like a taproot, which has just got, got an anchor. Uh, coast back a long time where you are just not seeing yourself as half full. You tapped into a half empty kind of viewpoint. Not, you know, we could be wanting to do something and accomplish something. We could get 90% done, but all we can see is the 10% we didn't accomplish. The 90% kind of gets lost in the, mm -hmm. gets lost. And I honestly, this is, this is you. And a lot of what got lost is because you misunderstood. I see you taking on lifetime after lifetime with a really high bar of perfection. You had wanted to accomplish so much, but when you got into the lives where you were helping others, there's a big history here of helping others, a big history of being of service, being uh, spiritual in many different ways, and I don't have time to go into those details, but you misinterpreted because if something did, if the result didn't show up right away, if you couldn't see the results of your work, you came away thinking you failed. There's a big fear of failure here too. It's a double-edged sword. And in fact, you accomplished m way more than most people would have in the situations you took on. But your goals for yourself, the perfectional, the, the, the bar of perfection, the, the, the level you wanted to reach, the goals that you wanted to reach, were really would have been impossible for anybody. But you have just this purity of purpose and sincerity of motive, Tony. You really do. And so you've taken on a lot of issues and a lot of... Um, these misunderstandings and a lot of hurt. There's a lot of hurt now. I want you to just start to release, start to let go of um, all of these, the, f the fear of success, the fear of failure, the misunderstandings, the misconceptions, the fact that you didn't see results and feeling like a failure. And then that makes you afraid to take the steps forward to be successful. I do also see patterns here related to success where you got some success and out of jealousy and com competitiveness and all of that, you often got cut off at the knees. It's, it's as if, you know, you, a lot of the lives we've been in were like middle ages, dark ages. We're in a very nice time here with very expanded energies, very expanded concepts that are out there. They weren't out there in so many of our lives. And so uh, what was there was, you know, hierarchy, uh, trying to get status and power. And when you did become successful, what happened was there were others around you that either would take 
credit for your success and make you seem like you're trying to hop on their shoulders or whatever, they also uh, sometimes would literally be so threatened by you, they'd find reasons to do things like imprison you, <sighs> expel you, you know, from the community. Uh, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. And so the reasons you have this fear of success is not because you're not smart, you're not with it, you're not you don't try, it's because you've had real experiences that you've taken on lifetime after lifetime that have been hurtful and painful. And I, I want you to also release the hurt and the pain because there is a lot of pain and hurt there too. Um, because a lot of times when you were betrayed, it was from people who you trusted or people that you would consider somewhat of a family or part of a community. And, and it was not easy for you. So, but you have, as I said, you've done a lot of work. You have this purity of purpose and sincerity of motive. It's really taken you a long way, and it's continuing to take you a long way because when you have that, you, uh, even though it's difficult, you are going to be going through the pull-throughs. You're going to be going through the pulling you to the other side by working with the energies, by doing the neutralizing by releasing and you can just say I am releasing all of those whether I understand what she's saying or not I'm just releasing it releasing all of it and the light your light is brilliant it's beautiful it's fully encompassing who you are and it will it will neutralize and absorb all that's been neutralized and okay so let me go back to the symbol because this is my indication, because I do see you releasing a lot of stuff. And what I'm seeing is this boy who's the man is growing up. You're now moving into what the man who would be the proper height for a man, so to speak. Because, you know, uh, it wasn't like you were some sort of um, midget or something like that, or little person. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be politically incorrect. But, but it was as if you were a boy, though, with a man, a man's image and now that man has grown up and what this is telling me it doesn't mean that you are done with this pattern and that you don't need to keep working on it but what this tells me is for this healing today you have accomplished uh, what we set out to accomplish which was at least the first few layers hopefully of the pattern now the higher selves are putting around you a cocoon of energy it's a energy field that will help you uh, both you, you'll be able to continue to process as long as you at the soul level, because the soul level is where the free will is held. It's not the mind level. And that's that giving permission to do the healing. And you did get permission. And so you did accomplish some good stuff today. But uh, with the cocoon of energy around you, the soul will be able to continue to process and release. The higher selves will be manning the process, even though the session is over and we're on to the rest of the show. But it also will help you acclimate to any shifts and energies that you might have as a result, because you have changed your energy field. You've let go of a lot of the negative, darker, denser kind of energies. And so the uh, the energy field itself actually shifts. And the healing was short, so you probably wouldn't have any side effects, so to speak, but the, the cocoon will help mitigate or allow you to um, not feel, you know, extra tired or um, maybe achy. Some, you know, people have different reactions sometimes, and this cocoon really helps to prevent that. And with that, the very short... Healing is done. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Wow. How do you feel over there? Well, I, what, at first, I, I, I kept feeling like, uh, with my eyes, I had my eyes close to it, um, but uh, at first I kept feeling like this resistance, like, like like somebody was trying to put their hand over my face. And I kept, like, <laughs> I had to move this away from my face because it felt like somebody was trying to, like, put, put their hand over my face. So, uh, and then I got really relaxed. And then I finally started envisioning and letting go. Good. And got, I Good. mean, not sleepy, but I, I, I kept catching myself, like, kind of leaving my... The energy does yeah, that. Yeah. Like, I felt like stuff was and leaving my And it's interesting, because before I came today, uh, the higher selves told me there might be resistance. Now, I didn't pick it up, which means that it was for you to work with, and you did. I didn't pick it up, but the higher selves told me there, mm. there would be resistance. So... 
I'm looking. I'm looking at you. I'm thinking, where's the resistance? I don't see any, and I just <laughs> went on. And you know, part of it is that just the time, right? You know, because if I'd worked right. on the resistance, it, and the reading was very general. If it's a longer session, I sometimes get specific lives, right. uh, especially perfect storm lives. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's <laughs> your pattern has a really big, <laughs> right? You know. Well, no. Some of the things that you said, especially at the end, I really uh, uh, related to. Okay, of good. betrayal and all that stuff and you know riding the coattails yeah just out of curiosity as a a bystander yeah. um with those patterns that you identified and that you identified with him in the soul scan would that those patterns that you both talked about just now would it affect things like communication monetary flow uh, the yes, way we're seen by the world. The, the fear of failure, you know, that, if, for example, or the fear of success and all that betrayal, any kind of fear is going to affect us at every level. Yeah. It affects us in our relationships. It affects us in everything, how we bring in money, how we make our living. I mean, it, that's why I mentioned before the show started that usually I encourage all the viewers to do the process with it because... All of us have fear of failure. Mm -hmm. and fear oh, of success. yes. Every, yeah. all, all of us. <clears throat> so that's what's exciting. You can sit, even though you're not being worked on, they're not being worked on, they can can, can do it. And and I do these healings in my meetup group. When I get how many people come, I do that many healings. So it can be really, they're all short. <laughs> but sometimes you get to the 10th person, they say, you know, I'm already, you've already hit my issue. I'm fine. You can pass mm -hmm. me by. One time I had a gal who thought that the person before her was her healing, and she was upset. She said, you know, you gate did my healing for this woman, you know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> but it wasn't that. It's that we have so many, there's common commonality. Right. So, so many similarities. Right. I yeah. think it's fascinating because what little bit I was just sort of eavesdropping into intuitively is based on what you were picking up and seeing in your experience it, it's you could have been a very bitter person in this lifetime, and I mean bitter, to where you almost would trust no one or share anything because of all That's of the right. bad stuff that happened to you mm -hmm. for so many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. So holding your cards close to your chest is going to be innate. Oh, I catch myself. Mm -hmm. I do catch myself yeah. being like that. And but then, you have done work. You have done work not only yes. in this life, but... You have been, at the soul level, you are determined to heal this thing. Mm. No, I don't totally yeah. want to. Yeah. yeah Which is why I think you have this format where you're always interested in pulling in sincere mm -hmm. people, healers, communicators with non-physical on and how you can break with. it. Yeah, like, so you I can mean, get to the other I side trust. of it. <laughs> yeah, and vice versa. So it's, yeah. it's fascinating to watch, like you said, the layers. It's not just layers in this lifetime. It's all of them. That's right. Yeah. It's all of the lifetimes. How, is imp how important is it for people that come see you realize that there are other lifetimes to before they can really start to heal? Or, is it, or does the, the work that you do open their mind up to their other lifetimes? Because, you know, well, some people resist question. that. that's an interesting question. First of all... It, this work is not about belief. As a matter of fact, I didn't have time, but I usually ask you to stand between belief and disbelief. Hmm. Because anytime you have a belief, it's a limiter. It's like right. a glass ceiling. We yeah. can't get past. So we want to stand in the center of neutrality. And I actually have worked for three years with a woman who does not believe in past lives. And her life has changed. Yeah, because I was wondering how that was somebody because comes to Because once you, it doesn't yeah. matter about belief. So once you, you're in those divine energies, if you give permission for those to work doesn't matter what they your work. belief system, they right. work. Wow. I even have had two clients that didn't speak English. They didn't understand a word I said, so they couldn't mm. know if they believed it or not. But that's what I'm saying, is once you activate those divine energies, they do all the work and we all come equipped. That is so fascinating because people have often a preconceived idea, belief, about what they think they're supposed to get from a yes. healer or an intuitive or a radio host. They just have a preconceived idea. So if it doesn't fit their little box, then they're negating the unlimited potential they could be receiving. Yes, exactly. The higher selves just say, allow the information, the energy to flow in without judgment. Hmm. So they, they often will put us in a state of neutrality. And, you know, I couldn't do that here. But um, And then you just allow it to happen. And then you get the benefit 
instead of you're cutting it off at the pass. Right. You know, oh, past lives, forget about it, you know, or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. So it, it, it hmm. really isn't about belief. Where did you feel it in your body? I know at the very beginning you talked about it felt like there was something here. Right. And then I, I saw you push the mic away. Yeah, I had to. I was, it, was, it just kept and then like feeling like, like you were floating away. But yeah. where else did you feel it? Oh, and, and definitely in my in my soul area. My, yeah, solar plexus. Yeah, solar plexus. So, nice. yeah, definitely I felt it there. I, I felt what well, was weird when I first released, I felt like I was going to tip over. Oh, how interesting! Mm, and I, that's why I had to catch myself. I was like, "Oh, I had to catch myself." <laughs> and then, and then it just—I felt more sturdy. And then, definitely in my midsection. I'm, I'm hearing permission, 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 permission when you're talking about that in this area, based on what you and the higher energies were mm-hmm. giving him. It's like now you have a—it's like you have permission from an authority and mm-hmm. the ultimate authority, your higher self. Well, sometimes I think that's what it takes is some, just someone, it doesn't matter who, just to give you permission to do something or, you know, or to accept something or to realize something. And I think just having that acceptance or permission well, to do it. you know, uh, the permission isn't at the mind level. Mm-hmm. We think mm-hmm. the mind level is making the decisions and sure it decides where we're going to have dinner tonight and things like that. Right, but right. the big decisions, like, am I going to heal? And that's a soul level. Mm-hmm. When am I going to die? Who are my parents? All of that. Mm-hmm. So um, at the mind, sometimes I get someone who's given permission at the soul level, but the mind level says no. Yeah. Or vice versa, which is the much more important or the difficult one. Right. If at the mind level they want to, but the soul level they say, er. Mm-hmm. Would, that could be a tiny bit of the representation that you were just talking about right here. Like the mind was sort of like still holding on to no, some I of the could old. Feel it. it was just like, ah, get away. Fascinating. <laughs> and so people probably ask you all the time, you've done this for X number of years. How come you don't get bored? It's never boring. I know, right? <laughs> oh my God, the stories I could tell you. I've got a million stories. One day there'll be a book just to, yeah. on the stories. I mean, it is amazing. No mm. two people are the same. That's the beauty of it because no two people think or feel the same thing about any subject. So they can talk about love for the next hundred years and you're going to keep having new experiences. Right. The symbols are, di- I never get the same symbols. Never. What's the, the most odd, because we have to wrap up in a moment, but what's the oddest symbol that you thought was odd in the beginning and then after the healing, you're like, totally makes sense. I, I, I don't know odd, but I'll tell you an interesting one. I saw a woman, she wanted me to heal her being more connected to something. I've forgotten. And what I saw was like a little girl running around like there were bombs coming down. Hmm. And here was this girl sitting in my meetup. I never met her before, but it just occurred. Why would she have bombs? So I miss. I just said, well, it, it couldn't be bombs. It must be things falling, coming from the left field, unexpected. And so I went on and did the healing. And she called me a couple of days later, and she said, I'm Iranian, and I was in bombs. Oh, and wow. not only that, she said... I went mar- grocery shopping after your meetup, and I came home, and I was putting the groceries away. And about 10 minutes later, my husband came in and said, who are you? And she said, what are you talking about? And he said, you haven't asked me to turn down the music. <gasps> She's been afraid of any loud noises. And subtle. And she, she just said, I never noticed it. And it, oh, it, wow. it, and she said, <laughs> when I started talking about the bombs, she, she started to cry. And she never heard the rest of my healing, but here she didn't have to hear it. It was happening anyway. Yes. And of course, that was not what she said to me get rid of the loud noises, but mm-hmm. that was pretty fascinating. Wow. Because, wow. you know. And that's where you have to trust what you're receiving and you just go to. with it. You have to trust and what you're receiving. And for everybody out there listening, uh, if you're enjoying this uh, amazing uh, session, uh, ex- and we know you experience are. with uh, <laughs> Janet Richmond. <laughs> Uh, Eddie, tell her, tell everybody what uh, where they can find her. Well, you can go to JanetRichmond.com for sure. And also you can get a hold of her. But look at you all prepared. What's your sign, this job? <laughs> um, Janet, I have an assistant. Oh, <laughs> yay. Uh, JanetRichmond.net. I'm so glad you showed this to well, me. Well, I have .com also, but they're two different websites. Oh, see, that's good information to have, yeah. too. So The .net has really been set up for media. Because I've started to go on television shows. Yeah, um, get used to it. Because they're going to be more, ain't they? Well, it'd be nice. <laughs> it's fun. And it gets the word out, which mm-hmm. is really what I want to do. It's, it's, it's that I want to get the word out. We all come so well equipped. Yes. And, and people genuinely respond to sincerity yeah. and authenticity. So when you do what you do, it just 
rolls off of you. So it pulls people in. It really does. You're so sweet. Well, it's the truth, but it's the truth. He's sweet. I'm Connor. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then you also hire, have HireSelfVoice.com. And that's the same as JanetRichmond.com. And they okay. both go to the same one. Yes. It, that's so it smart. threw me off for a second. I typed in. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought I typed in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have both because some people do one or the other. Yeah. And so... I like that. And on Twitter, at Higher Self Voice. Instagram, which is Higher Self Voice. And of course, Higher Self Voice for Facebook as well. Mm-hmm. And her books are Soul Psychology. That's the newest book. Yes. Soul Psychology, Our Journey Through the Human Kingdom Universe. That's what Rachel Angeline was telling me about in Cusco, Peru. Rachel Angeline. Okay. Yes. And Millie and Roe were telling me about the Higher Self Voice of Choices, which is about neutralizing your negative thoughts and emotional blueprints, which we got to see a little bit of that today. A little bit. And um, they gave me this book. Oh, They said, nice. you have to have this book, read the book, and then you're going to have her on the show. And I was like, okay. And da da da. And then and don't both forget are, both the, are available on Amazon. Don't forget the uh, uh, T Radio V. T Radio V. When is that going to be? Oh out? yeah, yeah. That starts June twenty first uh, through September thirteenth. September thirteenth, and that's going to be very similar. But the show is going to be dedicated to one live healing, one guest. Oh wow! So the whole show, the first hour, you know, the first show, I'll explain a little bit of stuff, but each show will have a guest. I haven't. I've only got one or two planned. <laughs> so it's, is this going to be obviously recorded, right? Yes, and it's going to be live. Good, it'll be live, but then you will have the recordings available later, yes. I hope. Yes, absolutely. Because what I keep getting a sense of is a DVD that's about 90 minutes. That's the high points of the high points of each show, all consolidated into one product that will just, it's like you're calling, oh my God, you're going to have a TV show. You're going to be on TV, TV. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, But use that as part of your sizzle reel. Hey, you heard it here first. Exclusive. <laughs> She's already started uh, like some sort of reel, but not from this show because we haven't had it yet. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's exciting. So this is so exciting. So I'm going to be on TV. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be a natural for that. And this is called the Higher Self, vo- the host of the Higher Self Voice. That's the name of the show, correct? It's, yeah, on T Radio V is okay. the network or the, I don't know, is that what you call it? The yeah. network. So network. starting June 21st through September the 13th, every Tuesday from 11 to noon, and live healings. Yes, and they'll be longer, so they'll be a little more. A little more intense. A little and, more and intense and a little bit more um, detailed. And will there be an audience there? Do you? No. Okay. It, it's kind of like here, but you yeah. guys Beautiful. have somebody here. But. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Over here. It's there's exciting. people sitting. There. Yeah, there's over here. There's people sitting. Is well, there a love connection here? I'm just like just curious. I'm joking. Are you talk- oh, you're pointing at them. I thought you were pointing. I was like, I Who think are you they just to? met today. So yeah. oh, there's okay. a love connection. It happened really All quick. Right. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We well, thank you so much. Thank you Jenna guys Richard. so much. I so appreciate We so appreciate you. And thank you for that. I really you're appreciate welcome. you. Uh, sharing me and, and to our audience because I hope it does help other people because like you it, said a lot of people could heal from this also uh, yes I didn't have the chance to explain that but and uh, if you missed our uh, if you tuned in halfway through or you missed the episode please go to our YouTube page this will be up uh, probably tomorrow tonight uh, you can uh, please subscribe we'd love to have you follow our, our YouTube and it's the truth to be told with uh, Tony and Eddie and, uh, and leave, leave a comment we'd love to have comments even good or bad I don't care let us have it. He doesn't. I care. He doesn't. He does. But I, I'm like, I like it. I'm very sensitive. Uh, and uh, please, on iHeartRadio, listen to us there. You can listen to our podcast there. Uh, again, listen uh, to us on iTunes. There's a lot of places. Go to truthbetoldwebtv.com. Find out all our upcoming guests uh, next week. Eddie and I are going to be at uh, Contact in the Desert. So you guys are going to be uh, hopefully tuning in live, watching some of our uh, hopefully amazing interviews with some of the top UFO, yeah, UFO experts in the world. So anyway, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have Paul Andrews from Contact in the Desert. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 